Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to this week's Intertech London live chat. Um, we're, we're here uh, this week, a slightly different um, origination. Uh, back in March, SQL Business Systems announced that they were buying white space. Uh, as those of you who know me, uh, I have a long interest in digital trading platforms and the London market and uh, and, and how that's sort of um, modernizing or, or perhaps not. And um, uh, I thought it'd be a great idea to pull together the protagonists, uh, SQL themselves in, in, in um, the white space and some uh, grandees from the London market uh, and have a chat about what this all means and, and, and what you're going to do. So without further ado, top right, can I introduce you to my panel, Ian Summers, who is the CEO at SQL. Hi, Robin. Uh, top left, Marcus Broom, who's the Chief Platform Officer at Whitespace. Hello. Uh, bottom left, Ian Fantozzi, who's um, got a new role, which we might speak about in a minute. Um, but you're the you're the Chief CEO of Beasley Digital. Hi, Robin. Hi, everyone. Uh, uh, and Mark and, and Kirk Madden, who's the COO at Liberty Specialty Markets. Afternoon, everybody. Thank you, Robin. Thanks for inviting me. Um, so uh, you you are now all you know big members of the of the Verisk group, and I see that it's all sort of quite exciting if you start to bolt all these things together. So uh, in the next thirty minutes or so, we're going to talk about um, what your plans are, uh, what the London market thinks about it. As ever, uh, for the audience, um, we will chat away for 30 minutes or so. Um, we encourage questions. We will try and set aside the last 15 minutes or so to, 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 uh, to answer audience, uh, audience questions. Uh, we can't promise to, to deal with them all, but, but uh, please send them in when, when they arise and we'll, we'll pick them up as we go. So, Ian, I'm starting with you. Um, uh, you you um, clearly set your sights on acquiring white space and did so back in March and, and that caused quite a kind of media stir. Uh, tell us what was the thinking, what, what, why, why, why did you buy it and, and, and what are you going to do with it? Well other than just to create that media stir which obviously was the primary reason. No, no. Obviously I think similar to you Robin, I've been in that environment for a long time now with working with you guys back in the RI3K days when I was at Aon and then I was the first chairman of PPL as well actually so I've been involved in that, that as well. And I think I could see the dream coming together. And, and for the first time in reality, Whitespace is a, a data-driven platform, unlike some of its predecessors. No, no offence to anyone else. Um, that, that's the key, isn't it? Getting data from the beginning of the process to the end of the process. So as soon as we were aware that Whitespace were looking for some investment, you know, that, that opportunity was just one you just couldn't miss. Combine that with the timing of COVID, as that catalyst to change, you know, technology has always been blamed for not being right when you come in to do electronic placement. I, I'm forever convinced it's it's more about the business change program and the, and the adoption and the brokers and the underwriters wanting to use technology, you try and force them, it doesn't work. And white space is user friendly um, aspect, along with the fact you've got to work from home. The two together were just a brilliant. Brilliant timing, brilliant product to come into the, the SQL suite. So is the plan, as we all suspect, to glue the front and the back together and, and create a kind of seamless ability to take the business from one end through to the other? Yeah, again, it's that, it is that dream about data flowing all the way through the process. And we obviously got broken clients, we've got underwriting clients, uh, policy administration systems at either end. So we can feed in and out of white space we will be able to feed in and out of white space. Let me just put that on the record. Uh, it's not there 100% yet. But that, that feeding in and out will give us that dream of the data flowing all the way through. Uh, small to start with, but as the data content grows and people become more used to using data, then that will flow all the way through and complete an end-to-end -end, uh, quote, bind and uh, county and settlements side of things as well. Yeah, no, no. Sounds like the, the we used to talk about strict through processing as a dream back in two thousand and one. Um, Marcus, over to you. Uh, so SQL came knocking. Do you think, oh great, that's SQL, or do you go, oh god, no, not them? I mean, what, what do you think? Um, 
you, you know, we started out um, not wanting to do the sort of deal that we did. Um, I think at the beginning of the, the first lockdown, um, we had got into a stage where the uptake of the platform was, was going faster than we had thought. And um, so was our cash. You know, we were spending money much quicker than we were earning it. And so our, our thinking was a funding round, not the sort of deal that we did um, with SQL. But then as, as lockdown sort of carried on, the, the customer uptake um, started to be faster than we had thought it could be. And actually our, our cash started to grow. So suddenly we had a, a situation where bringing in some funding perhaps wasn't the right thing to do. It, it wouldn't have made quite the same difference that, that, that we have now. So you know, when the contact was was made from from SQL, um, our plan had had changed, and suddenly something that probably didn't look that attractive at the beginning started mm -hmm. to look very attractive. Um, so you know, we're we're um, we're very happy to be part of SQL, uh, albeit that our our sort of route to it wasn't wasn't precisely planned. Mm -hmm. So what can you do now that you couldn't do before? I mean, what you know, what, what's the what's the plan with, with other than the obvious, you know, front to back? I, I think that the um, the approach really, at one level, um, is is much of the same. Um, we, we've always had a, a sort of an opinion at White Space that says put all of our energy into making the software better, and recognize that that most people sort of judge us based on their experience of our technology. You know, we, we've got thousands of users out there, many of whom sort of won't, won't meet us. So, you know, it carries, on, it carries on the same. We need to impress them by their experience of the technology uh, rather than, the, than what we say. Um, one thing that's really important to say is that the SQL deal doesn't change our interest in integrating with everyone and anyone. So in, anyone who's who's got white space, whether they're a SQL customer or not, it's very important that we we sort of connect, um, and 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 we suddenly don't become a SQL only shop. Then, in terms of the the things that we can do now that we couldn't do before, um, we were never short of ambition. You know, for for a long time at White Space, we had our, our sort of mantra, which was a it's a crazy plan, but it it might just work and. Over time, things started to happen. Things that seemed unlikely started to happen. And, and we, we, I think, added 140 customers in 18 months or something. So it, it was a very big take up. But I, I think what's changed now is that the, the ambition can stay the same, you know, doing much, much more with the platform. But we've got now a sort of capability and a credibility. I mean, I, I like to think as, as individual people, we, we had a degree of credibility from what we'd all done in the past. But as a corporate, uh, as a vehicle that people could trust, that's changed quite rapidly. And I, I think it'll be that, that that drives us now. Yeah, no, no, that's Ian Fantozzi, over to you. Now, now um, you're no longer the chief operating officer at Beasley. You've got a grand, you've, you've made CEO at last uh, with, with Beasley Digital. What's Beasley Digital? And, and what's, you know, what, what, you're very excited about the idea of taking that on. Um, well, I, I should say I'm, I'm still the COO for, for a short while yet, so that they're looking for a replacement right now. Um, but yes, I, I have changed roles. I do now lead uh, a new business unit called Beasley Digital. And we focus primarily on higher volume, simpler risk business, essentially business that's most suited towards automation, which obviously is a great opportunity to develop. The difference between this and, and the other kind of initiatives and e-trading solutions we've offered in the past is that we've, for the first time, combined our underwriting teams, technology teams and ops teams into one uh, true multi-skilled cross-functional business unit. So the underwriters and tech guys are all working together to roll out products. So it's, it's a new approach for us. We still have a product line structure for our complex risk business, so that's still all there. 
But for this sort of higher volume, simplerist business, we've tried to reorganize ourselves to have sort of one digital strategy for the group, have one digital portfolio of products, and to offer those through digital channels, through such as portals, but increasingly uh, through APIs. And, and at the end of it all, we just want to offer a seamless or frictionless service to our, our brokers and, and insureds. And uh, SQL is, is one of the sort of key solutions that we uh, use to do that. So, so <clears throat> with your COO hat on still, not your CEO hat on, uh, what did you think when, when you heard the white space uh, SQL news? Mm -hmm. um, you're obviously users of Beasley. What's, uh, has it, has it, has it changed anything? Well, we really like white space. And we were pleased to hear the news um, because I guess right now it's 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 a really good solution. It's got a very intuitive user interface and the underwriters like it. It works well for uh, sort of larger to sort of multi-section complex risk business. And that's been great, but it's been at quite a sort of small scale. So I think the sort of hookup with Verisk SQL could give it that scale that it needs and you know, give us genuine choice in the market about what uh, placement platforms that we use. I also like the work that SQL have been doing with Future Lloyds. So hooking up with the, uh, the data standards work and the uh, common data record work mean that potentially we should be able to take data feeds throughout the placement process end to end and you know to have that sort of good user interface that whitespace has and that user experience and then have that link up end to end with data feels like uh you know quite a good solution uh for us no i agree kirk um what were your views uh you, 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 are you are you a supporter of, of of what's going on does it help your life yeah, I don't, I don't think you can say it doesn't. I suppose I echo uh, a lot of what Ian has just said. I think also it gives us, you know, as a market, it gives us those options. So, you know, with regards to our brokers, you know, they've got different strategies, you know, in the space of digital and, uh, and electronic trading. And, you know, the white space SQL model, you know, may be a, you know, appropriate for some of those brokers and not others. But what it does, it just brings, you know, that, I, I suppose the, the collaboration together. So the, the white space SQL is interesting because you're now doing that under one roof, which makes it easier for, for lots of reasons. And, you know, it, it just, that's as a market, we've got to drive more of that, you know, into the collaboration. So, so I think this will accelerate, you know, the capabilities as Ian has said within white space into those, those users uh, or, or, you know, customers or end customers that, that want to trade that way. So, you know, more data focused and end to end. So, you know, for us, you know, not just LSM, but as a market, I definitely, you know, see this as, as a positive. Um, and, you know, this, from a broker's perspective, we haven't got any on the call today, but we do know through conversations that we've had, you know, there are broker strategies out there that, that are looking at this model, um, you know, as a, as a go-to model. And, and does that apply, do you think, uh, not just to London market, but but just globally. I mean, is that, are you look, you know, are you looking to engage with a with a with a broker audience outside of just London, presumably. Yeah, I mean, I think that again, that as a strategy, you know, has to be worked very very closely with you know the wholesale brokers that, that we that we trade with. Uh, but again, that strategy will be driven, you know, a, you know, a lot through them. I don't think there'll be many areas that we as with Liberty would be looking to this intermediate, but it does create that opportunity to make that frictionless. So, you know, where you're exposing that ability to go to a, a rater to get an immediate quote or capacity with structured data, then, you know, it, it's the perfect model. But as, as I said, as we know, you know, some some brokers you know, will prefer a different model. So what this does, it just brings, just brings options. Uh, and it does accelerate, you know, hopefully some, some areas of competitiveness Know, into the software house market because you know we we do talk a lot about insure tech and look over our shoulders but you know kind of a challenge to to, to ian and, and marcus and the and the insure tech that we've got within insurance you know we've got a great history of de delivering innovation 
you know, it's that pace of change now that, that we're going to really push. Um, Ian Thomas, uh, I keep hearing because I'm, you know, have my ears to the ground, something about the sequel six, you know, and I wonder whether it's some secret club that one has to apply to be a member to or something. Well, tell me about the sequel six. No, yeah, it's, it's definitely not a, a secret club, uh, although the full membership is secret. But I'll let, I'll let two of the members here discuss that in a second. But what's important to Kirk's point around innovation and investment, it's really important that you, you identify the right things for your client base and, and you invest in the right things. So we, we tried to crib an idea going back probably 15 years. Remember the G6? There was a, a group of underwriters that worked together about common problems. They were formed for only a short period of time but resolved a couple of issues quite quickly and succinctly and moved on. And that's what we were trying to do here. And it, it really originated out of the, the portal wars. You know, there's a number of uh, underwriter portals, broker portals. Everyone's got to log on to everyone else's. It's really easy. You just log on to mine. But that meant the practitioners were logging on to X many different portals, or they weren't, as the case may be. And so we got the group together. How can we address that? There were a couple of things that came out. Uh, one was around, well, we need APIs. APIs just plug and play, don't they? No. So you have, to, you have to understand at what points in the process does the API work and how does it respond. Uh, sorry for using jargon, but, it, you know, it's just connecting things in. Uh, so we, we set up a group to, to put some standard process in place, really high-level process, and some standard uh, API structure as well, just to address this portal war so you genuinely could come together. There were other ideas thrown in at the time. There were things like, uh, for us to be able to compete more effectively in the global marketplace, any individual syndicate stamp capacity is quite, line capacity is quite low, but if we could come together as a consortium, perhaps that, that could help us give a bigger line. Those sorts of things. And we've tried to address those and work perhaps a little bit as thought leadership, but very open with as many people as we can. So from a SQL point of view, we've relied heavily on the SQL 6 members' teams We've worked closely with Accord. We've worked closely with Lloyd's. And as Ian mentioned earlier, Blueprint 2. We're looking at the CDR. We're talking to PPL. And this all started just before White Space. So we were talking to PPL and White Space and the broken community, trying to pull them all together. So uh, I, I won't say any more about the membership of the clubs, but I will chuck it over to Kurt. Yeah, I, think, I, can, I can touch in. So, yeah, I think, you know, Liberty are a member of the sequel six as ian has said it's not an exclusive club but i think what we're trying to drive for it's almost like you know the lloyd's blueprint two you know is is going at a good pace but it's gonna you know take the time that it, it's designed to you know what we're trying to do is is kind of put a speedboat in the water because we're conscious that you know that that frictionless trading is is more and more of a demand from the brokers and rightly so so you know where we can create you know or take out as much of that friction in a quicker time frame, and some of it may be throwaway, but as Ian said, the standards shouldn't be, you know, whether it's data standards or, or API standards, but to create something that is actually, a, you know, a business of, you know, uh, driving, I suppose, uh, solving a business problem at the same time is what we're trying to do. Ian, if I've got to, anything you'd like to add to the to the, the thinking behind SQL 6 and, and uh, presuming Beasley are members? Yeah, we are. Um, Probably echo what Ian said. The the um, the demand for APIs is is huge right now. So you know every conversation with a broker is you know, what what's uh, your API strategy? What products are available through APIs? And there's a a risk, or there has been a risk to date, that we could all build our own versions of APIs to different standards. And uh, when Ian suggested getting together as the SQL 6, one of the things you wanted to address was having a common data standard and working with Accord and Lloyd's. Um, we we use the SQL platform, so it all kind of fitted quite nicely. So we're, we're very optimistic about, you know, trying to bring the APIs into alignment. Um, yes, certainly it's not something you can compete on, really having it, uh, you know, the best yeah. API uh, standard of your own. Uh, in fact, it's going to make you rather uncompetitive. So. Is, that's the kind of thing we uh, we want to work on together. Makes a lot of sense. 
I like this idea of portal wars. I think we might have an Intertech London event, the, you know, the portal <laughs> war, um, and maybe we get a few of them and we can have a war on screen or something. Um, Ian, we must go back, Ian Summers, we must go back to the original title of, of the uh, event, which, which we called Ecosystems from Buzzword to Reality. Uh, and the reason that uh, we supported on that was because I said that Berries have a role to play in this, and, and in a while, um, Alting sequel to to, to, to uh, white space clearly makes a lot of sense. You've also got um, an array of sort of various tools that you could add into that. Is is that you know on the agenda too? Yeah, no, absolutely. And there's a, there's actually a huge huge variety of opportunities that jump out at you. If you if I scatter gun a few of them just to give you some flavour, various you know is a real deep domain insurance organisation, data analytics or organisation. And so it's built up tools over, oh, actually it's now 50 years old this year. So it's been it's been growing and investing over that time. But some of the things that are various that we would connect into, to, if you like, take the process, quote, find all the way through closing, but also those ancillary services. So creating your wording. So we can hook into the, the Lloyd's wording database, which is a it is actually a very product. You can use the um, very North American property data. They've got data from all around the world. But if you picked one North American property data, masses of information. So instead of just relying on the broker's uh, advice of the client's history, etc., you can look at the real uh, underwriting uh, components, the things that you would rate the risk on blind so you can get all that data to augment and make better decisions so to kirk's point about automating um, underwriting processes you need to have a certain amount of data to be able to do that we can go much 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 deeper than we would have been able to do before using various data assets mm -hmm. at the end of the process you all have to report into lloyd's or the lloyd's carriers have to report into lloyd's we can hook into the mdc through, through uh, their, our reporting tools. And you've also got AIR, which is part of the various families for that cat modeling and, and associated risks. Uh, so th th there are, you know, there's literally hundreds of opportunities there. But the main one, I think, is that data augmentation. So really, meaning that the users haven't got a key in lots and lots of data. It, yeah. it can be brought together from perhaps a building address, you know, and it will give you all the attributes of that building. No, I mean, you know, that, that's something that uh, has been much discussed at Intertech uh, London and and uh, and our and our members as a as a theory, and you can see it happening more and more on the retail side, where people are starting to write policies and price policies based on two or three questions. But but uh, this seems to me a sort of palpable step forward to bringing the same sort of uh, things together to enable it to happen into the specialty market. Yeah. So, so Ian, just on that, so where do you think the balance is between you know what you just talked about, you know, and various bringing that to the market? So all that augmented data, whether it's sanctions or know your client or yeah. specific first party data. I mean, I agree with you that it will be you know a powerful benefit. I think individually, all of us are talking about that and looking at that in a moment. And I, I kind of, you know, you know, it, are you as a software and data house, you know? Um, am I making you accountable to come and bring that as a utility? Because I think you get economies of scale and, and it's that balance at the moment where I think a lot of us, have, you know, plan our own fields and you've got the capability there. You know, I'm not saying it would be a monopoly for you, but, you know, where are you in that space? Yeah, so, so it's a really good question and it's a, and it's a, balance, it's a balancing act, I think. There's, a, there's an element of we've got all the individual components of the jigsaw puzzle. They don't naturally fit together because they've been built in isolation. So there's an element of work that goes in there, which is, you know, being honest, not an uns uns insubstantial investment. So we've got to make sure that we're, that we're investing in the right things that are going to provide that value. And if we can, not a monopoly, I don't, I don't, I don't ever believe they're the right thing, but if you can provide utility uh, services, then we would absolutely do that. And that, again, would be another question to the likes of the SQL 6. Is this the right place to invest in? You know, a good example is many of our clients buy a product called Impact, which is a risk aggregation analytics tool. And, you know, and everybody um, QAs and quality checks the data behind that individually. They outsource that. Well, we can do that once on behalf of the market and once that product can be licensed once by the market. So those sorts of things absolutely are in our, in our plans. You can hold us to account 
if you give us the remit of these are the things that you think are the priority. If you leave down to us, we are building those. We are building the jigsaw from the components we've got, but we'll do it in the order that makes sense to us, not necessarily the one with the market. So that's a question for the for the panel, if you like. Where where, where do you want us to focus? And and the ones I rattled off around the various components make a lot of sense. Create your wordings to start with. That's that's reasonably simple to do. Augment the data of the risk that you're putting through the platforms. Um, that makes sense. End reporting, everyone has to do it. So let's also make that end reporting for you as well. And then catastrophe, if you're in that space, the catastrophe modeling again, another area. So there are obvious things. We just need those those lead triggers. And then the other sort of the, the other end of that chain, you know, from a broker's perspective, where are you with that? So we've got this sort of this is a bit of a carrier panel today. Um, but that, that engagement, you know, with what that new white space SQL model would look like with, with the brokering, where, what's your thoughts on where are you with that? Sorry, I'm talking over your, uh, your question, yeah. Marcus. I'll, I'll let Marcus answer on a pure white space. I'll give you the, the broadest spectrum. It, it, what's growing in the, in the market is the brokers want to be able to connect into the underwriters and make it easier for the underwriters. It's exactly the same as your underwriters want to make it easier for the brokers. I won't go into who, where the commission flows around that sort of model, but <laughs> you can both see the angles there. But by getting groups of underwriters, again, like the SQL 6 or a group of common players on SQL rulebook, we can go and we have been going to the brokers together and bringing them a pool of capacity so that it's not just one-to-one -one connections. So while they're going through the investment phase of digital, digitalizing, if that's a word, their processes, they need trading partners the other side. And what we can do is bring them a group of trading partners. Still got to have the right risks on there, but, but nevertheless, it helps with that. The other thing is portals are great, but lots of risks fall out of the portal. So you'll log on to do your DNA and it'll get referred, and then all of a sudden it falls out of the process. But what we're doing here is now where that falls out of a portal or through your API process, we'll throw that into white space as an open market risk so you still got all the controls and secret around it so a broker let's say uh, uh, you know that they haven't got to go into different process flows they can work from one place and it will go into the open market or go into the facility and if it goes into the facility and falls out it will switch back into the open market white space platform so that's the idea so it's it's really simplifying the broker's world Marcus, I thought I heard in there that you were going to get the chance to uh, comment on your, on your piece. I think from, from a broker perspective, I think before we were involved at Whitespace in the whole sort of electronic trading arena, people were telling me that, that brokers were reluctant to share. You know, they were holding on to their data and, and, and really worried about it. And I guess our experience has been a big shift from that, 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 that brokers certainly... Um, plenty of brokers see that their ability to share data is going to be a competitive differentiator. So it's it's gone from something that, that they've been a bit sort of worried about, perhaps, to something that's perceived as a, as a real differentiator. Get it right, and you can be more productive, and you can deliver a better service to your customer. And those things on the upside have, have started to change the shift in, in brokers. So sharing data not just um, between broker and underwriter but also interest in extending that out through the producing brokers as well so broker to broker transactions also coming soon on on white space i'm going to press you on that in a sec but let me just say to the audience that we've got a few questions which we're coming to in a minute but but in the next two or three minutes we're going to move to audience questions so now's the time to please um to, to load them up um, Marcus, I'm intrigued by that. Is is the broker's attitude and the change of it a function of this acquisition, or was that happening anyway? And um, and generally speaking, how how's the London market treat? Has it treated you any differently to um, now that you're part of SQL to what you were treated before? I mean, do you think is that is that, is this part of a sort of trend? I, I, I think it's it, the SQL thing. I, I guess there were a few things that White Space was already doing that have become part of something bigger. So clearly at a corporate level, we were, we were looking at our corporate development and we've become you know, part of a much bigger organization. 
But the same is, is true of the technology. So we, we had an original uh, data-driven approach. And when we were sort of first championing that data-driven approach, uh, lots of people were saying, well, that's exciting. But it didn't have the, the scale of interest across the market that it has now. So the whole interest in data and standards has, has grown. If you look as well at, at, at um, the, the way the market looks at us, we've got a fantastic relationship now with Lloyd's, which, which wasn't quite the case before. But, but again, that was moving in the right direction, even before the, the SQL transaction. And their shift in Blueprint 2 to say, well, actually, let, let's have uh, multiple placing platforms was, was another thing that, that's, if you like, part of that growth. Yeah. So take all those things together. Um, and we, we have a very different relationship with the market as a whole. I, I think we've got many of them uh, already customers, but many of the others, even the, the, you know, the large scale brokers, are talking to us in, in the way that perhaps they weren't before. So it's a big, big change. Um, SQL part of it, but we're fortunate to have been part of a few you know, big changes as well. Uh, Ian, uh, we're going to get the audience questions now. Um, they're coming, kids. Keep them coming. But we've still got room uh, for some more. Now, now Ian Fantopi, I'm coming to you because this is Foursquare in your strategy for um, Beasley Digital. We, we've got a question here, which is, um, what are the best practices for smaller commercial carriers in developing and implementing their ecosystem strategies in partnering with InsurTechs? As um, smaller carriers we don't have a, a lot of venture capital funds and then have to be very careful about uh you know what what strategic partners and uh you know when have you have you a view on that i mean you've got a little bit more money to spend than some but um what you know what, what on your on your kind of sme type portfolio for instance who do you do partnerships do you see insure tech and as as a kind of way to make yourself a bit more efficient um yes we do i the, the only thing i would say in, in in the sme space that there's there's nothing better than a, just a really solid automated platform so um you know, whereas partnering with an insure tech could could bring in new capabilities and new ideas that the ones that uh, potentially most of interest to a smaller carrier might be one that um, that really just manages the transactions as efficiently as possible. Um, so I, I hope yeah. that answers the question. It's, it, not being a small carrier, it's probably um, probably not the best to answer it, but it, that's that's kind of the way I'm, I'm thinking. I don't think we've got any small carriers on, on, on the call, but I mean, I think it's, I, I think funnily enough, it's an area in which, um, InsureTech has not really brought enough to the table in that kind of SME, SME commercial type space. Um, it, some, of them have, some of them have, but they, they tend to get bought up very quickly. Yeah. <laughs> it, it is a, you know, it's fertile territory, that one. Um, uh, one Ian Summers, one for you. Um, uh, how can third parties build software businesses using APIs and still find a way to protect IP and not just have their um, oh, whoops, uh, have their businesses imitated and stolen. Is this a concern that SEEK will have, or do you see it more as a sort of opportunity? Um, so I don't see APIs and standards um, as any threat at all. So that, in fact, I think it's uh, it helps us provide a solution to our trading partners with a total cost of ownership, which is much lower. I think without that, you end up investing a lot of money building proprietary connections to each other, which, you know, will will pay back, but they tend to be piecemeal big investments. And that's, you know, that's not scalable. Uh, and we all need the market to thrive. And for the market to thrive, we need to reduce cost, reduce costs through APIs and standards. So I don't see that bit at all as a threat, APIs and standards. If you get into some of the cleverer bits of the tech, the AI and the, uh, the, the, the way we interpret the insurance domain information, that is our IP, and we would protect that quite um, mm. quite fiercely, so to speak. But we also, you know, when you're investing uh, multiple millions every year, you're going to stay slightly ahead of those insurtechs trying to catch up 
on those bits and pieces. They tend to come in with very point solutions, which are good, really good, but they have to fit into the overall stack. So to Ian, Ian's point, you know, people are looking for a solution that makes their transaction easier, not part of the transaction. You have to have an end-to-end -end solution. Otherwise, you've got one clever bit of technology in the middle of bits that aren't quite so clever. Yeah, I think just just to add to that, where we where we need to get to, in, this is my opinion, to, not necessarily a corporate opinion, is is to get really quickly to what that capability is that's out there, so we can just go you know, and get it. We still spend a lot of time on discovery. Who does this? Where can we find this? Is this built? And I think, you know, I suppose again, sort of a push, you know, into that software space and sort of directed at sort of Marcus and Ian. It's getting to that level where. You know, we, we all as a market come to these other utility, whether it's SQL or whether it's someone else, we just know where to go and we can get it and we can, you know, implement it is is a, is a view. And, and again, the pace of how we get to things is one of the reasons that, that you know, with, we talk, you know, small groups get formed is because, you know, they will move at a faster pace than the whole market, which is fine. And as long as we then sort of bring it all back together to, to the benefit of, of you know the market and, and the brokers that bring that business to, to whatever marketplace we're talking about whether it's continental europe or, or the lloyd's market yeah good point um, on the pause there's quite a lot on the kind of um politics of the london market I, I, ian fantozzi is a as a senior pro uh I, i've got a sort of slightly sensitive one for you i'm sure um how does your growing use of white space square with your considerable and continued investment in ppl uh, you, you i mean presumably you back all horses Yes, we are. We've got considerable volume going through PPL, so um, that's still a major focus. And, and when we get the next generation PPL, we'll, we'll be using it. Um, but but uh, just looking at my present company on this panel, uh, we've all been through many years of different platforms uh, that, that have had almost no adoption at all. Uh, and now suddenly we've got Two yeah. that have got plenty of adoption, and so that that's got to be a good thing. Um, you know, to actually have the choice of two uh, decent market scale platforms is, uh, is you know, it's a great opportunity. Yeah, I mean, the irony isn't isn't lost on us, Robin, in the sense that you know <laughs> we've had all those years of you know being lambasted because we haven't got anything to work, and now that there's a choice, everyone wants to know you know what horse is everyone back in. But I think Ian's absolutely right. It's about choice. Uh, you know, we all, lots of us have Sky and Netflix and Prime and because that's that's the world that we live in and having more choice drives for, for a much better, um, you know, competitive world. I think choice and competition is is key. You know, if, if you look at places that, that have gone with a single supplier and in, in effect created a, a market monopoly, that, that single supplier has no incentive to improve, to continue innovating it becomes defensive about its technology I, I, i'm convinced that the approach that that certainly lloyd seems to be taking now about creating a little bit of competition in this space rather than you know creating a single supplier will be the thing that drives change and, and it's important to have multiple suppliers in the market yeah can, can i just add that that's why going back to that standards point again that's why standards are so important because it allows competition and it allows other suppliers to come in knowing that they're investing in what is a common workflow and a com common connectivity um you know it, that is competition for sql white space but it's not it's not unwanted you know we you need competition to thrive and there was, I, I, I'm privileged. I can see some of the questions that come in, so I'm going to answer one if that's all right. One of them said, "Is SQL and uh, SQL six donating the API APIs to Accord?" Uh, we already have, so that work wasn't just SQL's work; it was the SQL six's work. Uh, that's been taken over now by Accord, and they're building it into their next generation of standards. So, um, so if I can chip in that we at WhiteSpace also donated our data standard to Accord. 18 months ago or so. If you, if you deal with people that aren't happy to, to donate standards, you've got to ask the question why. Well, at that point, it's not a standard, by the way. It's something, but it isn't a standard. The standard, standard suggests that it's a standard across more than just you. you, you. So, so uh, look, um, there's, a, there's a very good question here, which uh, I'm, I'm sure uh, is, you know, on 
with quite a few lip switches. Um, I, I'm all for 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 the comp, for the competition and choice. You know that's obvious. Um, but as a as a market, the London's not uh, short of a diplomacy and political issues. So so the question here is: Look, while while the and, and I, whoever is brave can take this question. Um, uh, while this group is clearly kind of seeking to drive digital adoption, but based on the experience. Um, isn't there going to be a certain amount of sort of arm wrestling between, you know, the the various stakeholders in the market uh, that that kind of are, are getting increasingly concerned about the creation of monopolies and um, you know associated issues? Ian Summers, do you want? Are you, there's a, there's a question. Related yeah, question. You know, the market's very worried about you. You know, controlling all the bits. You know, what do you what do you say to to that? But I would obviously say we don't control all the bits is, is the first point. If you, it, Almost all of the services that we provide, there are competing products from other suppliers. What we are doing is bringing them all in together in a family. And, and for the specialty market, we are focused very much in the specialty market. We are joining those dots together. And, and I think that's a, a benefit to everyone. But one of the things that we're doing not to... Uh, decreased competition, but we, we're positioning each of those jigsaw puzzles as best of breed. So we're trying to be the best placing platform, the best policy administration platform, the best claims platform, but they're plug and play. So if you prefer a different claims platform, you can take that out and plug it in. That, that's where these standards and common ways of working will become really important. We obviously want to be the best of everything, Reality is we probably won't be the best at everything. Um, even, you know, the, the mighty Veris, which is our ultimate owner, they are by far the market leader in certain d data lines and not in others. And you need to be able to use data. If you're an underwriter writing multiple classes, you need to be able to take data from the right sources and you need to be able to take software from the right things that support your business model. We'll just give you the options which, are, which we're aiming to be the best in the specialty market. But there is there is genuine needs choice out there. Uh, I'm going to continue this on sort of five minutes or so longer than than planned because there are lots of good questions and lots of uh, issues still to to discuss. Um, uh, uh, Ian Fantozzi, back to you. Um, you've created a certain amount of intrigue with the idea that that um, BC Digital you were able to create a cross functional team and put all the skills in in one place. Um, you know. Uh, uh, what 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 was the thinking behind that, and, and and what did you learn that you could teach anybody else? Do you think? I'm, I'm sure there is intrigue because a lot of companies are trying to do this, and and if you're going to deliver uh, products in the digital world, you, you kind of have to have all those different skill sets working together towards a, a common business goal to to be successful. And we've certainly seen that in the personal line space. Um, I think the, the, and we've been trying this for a few years, but, but our challenge has been that we're organized into underwriting product teams and there's an IT team and an ops team and a data team and a finance team. And, and although we work very well together as an organization, that there is still uh, an element of silos and uh, people have uh, slightly different sort of business goals that they're aiming towards. And so in the sort of higher volume, simpler risk business, we thought, well, let's just see if we can reduce friction from the model and put the underwriters with the technology team and the ops team together within one business unit, like a business within a business. And we have in effect just created a cross-functional team by putting everyone aiming to the, towards the same business vision, the same business goals. Um, and we're still very early in that journey, so we'll just have to see how it goes. We're already feeling a lot better about it um, because you've got all those skill sets together in one team and we've never really had that before. In a yes or no, in a yes or no answer, literally, is that replicatable across uh, Beasley as a larger group, do you think, that model? I think over time, it's, as I say, it's, 
early days, you know, we, we are, we're a specialty insurer and most of our income is through complex risk business. And do, do we need to create a, a cross-functional team to make that success? Uh, not really. Um, there's definitely benefits to, to pockets of that. I think the, the question is probably more, now how much can you automate in this business? So it, we you know we're starting with a simpler risk business, but there's actually, there's a, there's, there's a huge spectrum of risks that uh, could be automated in different ways. And I think as, as we go over time, we'll find that more and more business can be automated so that we can give quicker responses to our brokers. Thank you. Good question here, Kurt. One for you. Cool. Assuming that uh, the risk and everything we've been talking about here with the SQL 6 is sort of, we need to push on at pace. Where do you think that leaves the whole sort of future of Lloyd's, the, the broader market discussions? Uh, is there a clash or does this, is it a natural fit, do you think? Yeah, no, I think it's a natural fit. I think just to, to keep on with the, the speedboat analogy, you know, when you want to get to the next island, you'll build and deploy a speedboat. You know, and uh, but when you want to you know, get around the world, which is kind of the, the Lloyd's blueprint, you know, it takes longer. You know, you need to have more thought in it. It needs to bring in, you know, more actors. But, you know, that ultimate goal is still your vision. So, you know, what we're talking about on just deploying is exactly what we need to do. We need to create some capability as fast as we can while, you know, that that superstructure is being pulled together behind the scenes. Ian, something to add to that? I, I, I mean, yeah, no, I, I, I would agree that I wouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily agree with the the lack of thought in the, in the original version. But I do think what's important is you demonstrate progress in the market. You demonstrate success. You demonstrate real benefit case, and you do that with fast leaders, if you like, or fast followers. You can't get the whole market. Best will in the world, you cannot move the whole market at the same pace. And if you do, you'll just slow it all down. So the fact that you've got a handful of people moving a bit faster, that's, been, that's a benefit to everybody, irrespective of the technology choice you make. If I can add one, one thing to that, that we found at, at Whitespace that the key to a lot of this is actually creating something that, that it of itself then creates demand to use it. Yeah. And actually trying to persuade people to change but by sort of almost a... Um, choosing my words carefully, a sort of instructive or a, a market reform approach is, is a, something that we haven't really liked because the idea of being reformed, people tend to object to. But instead, creating something that makes demand, we think is a really interesting way. Uh, uh, and doing that in a software as a service way that enables people to very quickly come on board. And God forbid, we also make it relatively quick for them to go if we get it wrong. It, it creates an environment that can drive that change and that the market itself becomes more more bought into it than, than being driven in a direction. Yeah, I mean, I think I, I agree, Mark. I think I think we just need both ingredients. I think, you know, we've seen where you know, edicts have made a difference. There's no doubt about it on, on uh, adoption. But you're right. I think if we have both and we've got that balance, then, then that's the, the, the sweet spot. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to quit while we're ahead because I've just received a little button that tells me that we've only got five more minutes left. And that's why I was on one of these last week, which sort of quit on me. I'm, I'm not risking that again. <laughs> um, uh, um, everybody out there, thank you so much for joining us. There's a big audience today and a really engaged one at that with, with lots of questions. I'm sorry we didn't get a chance to deal with them all, um, but, but maybe we'll, we'll have another time. To, to the panel... Uh, thank you very much indeed. This is a very, you're all incredibly busy people and I, we appreciate your time and uh, you would have enlightened a lot of people on kind of what your plans are and what's going on and, and uh, you know, clearly what you're all up to is of, is of immense importance to the London market and specialty market as a, as a whole. So thank you very much, all of you. I thought in the middle there I was chairing a SQL 6 meeting. I, I, I wondered whether or not, you know, I, I sort of moved into a SQL 6 discussion at one point. Um, uh, here at Intertech London, we're back next. Uh, uh, no, we're not back next week. We're back in a fortnight's time when we're talking about claims. This is Driving Claims Excellence with Technology for Flood Events, which is sponsored by ISI. So for those of you who want to know how best to deal with flood claims, that's for you. Um, 
And that just about brings us up to time. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you for the panel very much. And, and we'll see you all again soon. Thank you all. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.